Call hello, you how about Hashem, you how about Shai, Hashem, Dash, double honors to the elders and apostles, great millstone over well. I am not a member, however, I've entered into their labors. Peace, mercy, and blessings to the sincere brothers and sisters, students, wherever you are, whatever your life may be. Uh, I did, I don't remember what I titled it, but I knew I, I put a part one on there, so this is part two to that. And it'll it'll be various other things as well, depending on how the spirit leads, but um, as I saw this, I was reading through the book of Psalms, going, you know, going through, making my additional highlights or whatever, you know, just trying to, um, I guess, translate whatever I have highlighted within my phone app onto my physical Bible. Um, and it's good because it keeps you reading precepts, it, you know, it helps you to turn the pages and know where things are and, and not completely and solely rely on a, a device that may or may not work. Um, sooner or later. So um, I'm going to let this play. And again, this is on uh, judgment and, and what we should be doing, how, how we should be walking. Uh, because not only, I, I believe it will all tie together in the end, but uh, I was watching this. Uh, yeah, I'm, I need to read through this article, actually. But uh, of course, you have the Elder Yashawamba did the, wait. Often they start targeting critical infrastructure. Okay, so yeah. So I will do my best to link this video. Uh, I'll remember to link this video uh, and plug it as well. But it's a lot of different things that are going on. Uh, and basically, all these other countries are preparing their people uh, for war. But, you know, here in Babylon the Great, there's no preparation of anything. People are still walking around with um, with their nose in the air and what they gonna do this weekend. Uh, you know, the, the spirit of mirth is heavy. Well, I mean, still folks are living in anguish, but you know, folks are depressed, but they're turning to uh, fleshly things and depending on these fleshly things. And this is my personal observation um, to combat the uh, the anguish and, and fear. They know things are going on, but uh, in true American or in true Babylonian fashion, they choose to ignore, uh, especially our people, they choose to ignore and they want to hear sweet things. They want to hear the, you know, prophesy unto us right things and smooth things. But when it comes to the truth, they, they turn their ear. They're like a deaf adder. All right, let me let this play real quick. The man-eating lions of Savo. I promised you the story. Here it is. The ghost and the darkness. In a four-month span, in 1898, these lions were responsible for up to 150 human deaths. And the part one, it was uh, the tiger got over four, or the tigress had gotten over 400 something, maybe 450 bodies. And that was the, those spirits of vengeance. So I'll revisit that scripture before we move on as well. You most likely have seen the movie, or even heard the Patterson account. This isn't that. This is from the perspective of Mutunga. He was a local man of the tribes that lived in the area known as the Wakamba, sometimes the Kamba. He worked as a translator, and he also brought goods from his village some miles away to the railroad. Fresh cheese and milk and agricultural products. The killings had already begun, but only two, and nobody knew that they were connected as of yet. That was all about to change dramatically. They sent a man by the name of Mr. Finch, we don't know his first name, to the Wakamba village to pick up. Before we let it, let me get a, let me just get the, let's get the scripture real quick before we continue on. I think it's like a three minute video, but it's, it's a, it's a good video, it, it, it's uh, if you're squeamish, I, I don't suggest that you watch it, um, <laughs> but it, it's a, it's an eye-opener to the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, like he, he, there is no, like the bear that mauled the children, uh, when they cursed, uh, was it Samuel? We need to get that too, well, let's get that, because uh, I don't remember where, I think it's in the book of Samuel, but let's get um, 38, or is it 39? Yes, so uh, Ecclesiasticus 39, also known as Surat, verse 28. Uh, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. 
in the time of destruction, the power, uh, they power out their force and appease the wrath of him that made him, uh, that made them. All right. And who we know who made them because the Lord is the father of all spirits. And if that, there's a, uh, we we gonna get that too. So I, let me keep that in my, in my, in my mental Rolodex for those two scriptures, uh, fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance teeth of wild beast and scorpion serpents in the sword and punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. So there is no negotiation when your card is pulled, it's pulled. So let's, uh, uh, of him that made them turn to him. I know this ain't going to work. It might be returned unto him. I know it. So we need to get that. Let's get that real quick. Uh, or. Let's see Hebrews 12 and 9. Okay, so let's go Hebrews 12 and 9 real quick. Cause I think that there's another one. Yeah, or it, it might be the same thing. Let's see. Oh, I've got it highlighted. Hebrews 12 and 9. Uh, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? So you have that. And then... Uh, they, Return unto him that made them. Let me see. Let's see. That's why I need to be able to find these things without the Ecclesiastic, Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. I should have remembered that. All right, so let's go to Ecclesiastes real quick. So we'll get that. And I need, I don't remember exactly where, we need to go Old Testament. We uh, where I think it's in Samuel, though, if I'm not mistaken, where those bears mauled the children. Dang it. All right, so let's get that. All right. Then shall the dust return to the earth. This is Ecclesiastes. Uh, as is, as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So that is perfect order and perfect balance. You can also read in the book of Second Estrus. Um, I don't exactly remember where you find it, but just type up. Uh, I liken my judgment unto a ring, right? So reincarnation is a thing. Uh, you you live a life, and then you come back and you execute that judgment because judgment is played out on the, on the earth, right? Um, and now let's get, before we continue the video, I know because it, it, it's, it's about to get, um, serious. Let's see. I know it's in first Samuel. I just don't remember the chapter. It was Elijah, not Samuel. They call it Elisha. He said, "Thou." I should have just typed in "thou bald head." All right, so Second Kings two and twenty three. So let's get that real quick, and then we're gonna get back to the video. I just didn't want to uh, pass up on the precepts that were coming because I'll forget them if I don't do them right away. Second Kings, or was it First Kings? I don't remember. Second Kings two and twenty three. So this isn't nothing new. All right, so to, uh, yeah, these were the children. They were talking mess about Elisha, and he cursed them. All right, and then we'll go straight to 23. And he went up from thence unto Bethel, and he was going up by the way. There came forth a little children out of the city and mocked him, said unto him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. He cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the woods and tear forty and two children of them. 
All right. Let that sink in. And remember, Isaiah 55, his ways are higher than our ways. So this may seem gruesome. This may, why would the Lord, why would God, why would God do that? You better come up out of that Christianity. Get a damn grip. All right, let's finish this. Up Matunga, his produce, and bring it back to the railroad station. Somewhere between the village and the railroad station, they stopped to have a quick bite of lunch. Later, Matunga said it was a very fine lunch. Mr. Finch stood some distance away, having a home-rolled cigarette, when the lion attacked suddenly from the high grass. Matunga later recounted that he immediately threw his Knob Karee club at the lion, but it didn't even flinch. It held Mr. Finch down, and Matunga screamed at it until his voice was nearly gone. He retreated behind the wagon, and he watched what came next, helplessly. The lion held Mr. Finch down with its great paws and began to lick his face, gently at first, like a lover. Mr. Finch was completely quiet during this. He was playing dead, it seemed. The licks became less gentle and more rough. And I don't know if you know, and I'm sorry to keep pausing this, I don't know if you know anything about the tongue of a lion or the, the these tongue of these carnivores, these big cats, but um, the harder they lick, it, it's to strip the bone, it strip the meat of the remaining meat from the bone. So um, they can lick you gently and you, it'll still feel a little rough if you've ever, I don't know that many people that have been licked by a big, a big animal. It feels a little rough, but if they're actually trying to actively get meat off of the bone, um, they can kind of uh, lick a little harder and then their, their, their tongue is very rough and it scrapes that remaining meat from the bone. Mr. Finch would squirm. When he would squirm, the lion would gently bite down on his face until he stopped squirming and then it would begin to lick again. Soon Mr. Finch began to whimper and then cry and Matunga watched helplessly as the lion continued to lick his face until there was nearly no face left. At that time, Mr. Finch cried and asked to be put down. Matunga had no way of doing so, so he did all that he could. He ran away. He went back to his village and told them what had happened. They later found Mr. Finch's body right where it had fallen, minus his face and most of the flesh on his chest. It had begun. The man... So there you have it, those spirits of vengeance. And when I heard, when I hear things like this, when judgment goes out, uh, of course this is old, but you, you have to think, um, put yourself in the shoes of someone who is witnessing total societal collapse. Um, I don't know, anarchy in the streets. Think of worst case scenario. Because the Lord can bring your worst fear or your worst terror upon you as judgment. So think of worst case scenario. And in that worst case scenario, what would you be thinking? Knowing that, knowing you're an Israelite, knowing you should have been doing, you know, knowing you should have a... Uh, uh, have put off this life and, and, and uh, you know, taken up the cross and, and, and tried to live accordingly. Um, but you didn't. You put it off. You thought you had time. Uh, what do you think would go through your head? Complete regret. Fear. And I'm talking fear where you cannot move. When you like when like when when there's accounts of men being when uh, uh of some of our ancestors seeing angels, and they thought that they were going to die. Think about it. So do everything you can right now, especially when no one's looking. I speak as a man, but I think the Lord is very happy with those who have the integrity without anyone looking. You live your day to day according to the scroll. You do your best. You read and you learn and you apply them. 
really, really think about that. Um, I've had some that I've written down in, in Psalms, but I also, uh, I will, let me see. Upon I, K J V. Goodness, I had a brain for it. Okay. All right. So you have. I will send my terror ahead of you and through. Okay. Now. Nah. Jeremiah forty nine. And none shall gather him up that wanders. Okay, I'm not. I, there's a there's a specific scripture I'm looking, I'm looking for, but I can't find it. But you know, you get the point. <laughs> Through the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Right. Um. I didn't write what this one was, so. Um, huh. Let's do Psalms twenty-seven and five first. We'll, we'll get a couple, and then that'll be it, because um, I think the point is made, but it doesn't hurt to grab some extra precepts just in case somebody didn't have them. So this is Psalms 27, verse 5. Uh, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now, let's, let's keep reading, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies and round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. So, you get it. Oh, well, look at verse 2, hold on. When the wicked... Even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. And we know that's not literally. Um, they stumbled and fell. So this, here's your, David understands. King David understands what it means to be covered and protected by the Lord. And he had complete sheer mercy because according to the law, he committed adultery and he should have been put to death. But the Lord lifted him up because he was humble and he truly repented and he was contrite with a broken spirit. And even when Saul uh, was killed, David killed the man that brought the message to him. For speaking so lightly that you could just easily put your hands on the man of the Lord like that. David had honor. And we ought to strive for that honor. Not only David, but... Um, you know, the offspring of David, Yahweh Shai. He moved with honor. He didn't he didn't try to plead his cause for anything. And of course we could never be as great as Yahweh Shai, but we, we ought to we ought to strive for that perfection. Cause we were definitely given that covenant. So, you know, while we there, hold on. No, it's not 127. Uh, it's not 127. 105. Oh, okay, right, right here. Uh, um, 105, this is Psalms 105, and we're going to read the highlighted portion. Um, he is Yahweh our power. His judgments are all in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generation, which uh, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, I will give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. So focusing on verse 10. He confirmed it unto Jacob, right, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. So if you are a so-called Negro, Latino, or Native American, or your forefathers go back to the same, or you may look like another race, but this resonates with you, you may, I may be talking to you. And if 
the covenants and the oaths and the precepts and all the different uh, statutes was what got them into the land into the first place. Nothing's changed. That's the same thing that gets you into the land in the second go around. Or bring it back into the bringing us back to the land. But this time it'll be in a, a surefire, uh, uh, a spectacular fashion because the scriptures do say that they won't even talk about the, the first Exodus anymore. So, you know, with that being said, I just want to grab a couple of scriptures and, and I didn't really um, have a dedicated point to this other than to just remember, you know, the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 time, 10, times brighter than the sun. And people can see you outwardly doing what's right, but the Lord always knows within. So do your best, your very, very best to walk uprightly in integrity, even when no one's looking, because um, when judgment comes, it'll be for those. I mean... Some people have outwardly said things, you know, certain certain different, I, I only listen to GMS, but there are certain other camps that say some pretty crazy and blasphemous things. And, you know, lest they repent, they'll be destroyed. But, um, you know, for those of us who are not, who are on a lower level, it's important as well to walk with integrity, even when you're all by yourself. Don't forget to pray. Don't forget to repent. Um... Form that relationship, you know. You don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to be praying to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for the first time when he brings your terror upon your own head, right? So, um, again, with that being said, Shalom.